Yo! Video games. Oh, okay, so we did it. Uh, it's actually not four years later. What is it, four months later? Well, deja vu. Yeah, we... Uh, back again! We're, we're, we're back, and the last time we got together to chat about this was, I think, September. And September, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth had its first playable. It's weird because it felt so much longer ago. It kind of does. It's only because, yeah. well, not because of just so much stuff has come out. There's yeah, so yeah. much. So, so much game releases. It, it happened, and um, we we had some pretty good impressions of demo one. Uh, that went well. Clearly, the game needed some work in some yeah, ways. Yeah, yeah. It was fidelity. It, it felt like in some technical aspects that was my biggest criticism was like, yeah. okay, so this needs to get figured out, but. We played what is essentially a uh, close to final build of FF7 mm -hmm. Rebirth, although was 100% a more constrained uh, like demo experience. Yeah. We kind of played the first part of the game. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically like it, it was like here's here's the beginning. Yes. Chunk. And uh, admittedly some people will be uh, like disappointed that I at least I have jumped in and tried it. But at the same point, it's like, how do I not say no to this opportunity? And people will be expecting me to at least give impressions of it. So, you know, with that being said, we just went down there and tried it because it was like, okay, fine. And then there's, <laughs> you know, obviously things are looming on the horizon. Is there going to be a demo for this stuff? Like, is that eventually going to pan out? So it was like, okay, so we don't know what that stuff's yeah. going to be. We might as well just go play this. <clears throat> and um, I'm happy to say that it, in my opinion, I do not think that they really uh, spoiled us on very much. No, it doesn't feel like it. it. In retrospect, it almost feels like the second demo was more spoilery than, than this bit. one in a weird kind of way. I mean, it was later in the game. Not yeah. much later, just a little bit later. Yeah. But there was, there was a weird thing where, if you noticed, there was a bunch of gameplay stuff available to us in the second demo, or the first demo. That was not in that the one we just played. That was not in this one because you have to work your way up. Yeah. You, you had to build your, your way up because we were at like a later save file. We had way more stuff unlocked. Yeah. So that's that was the thing that was almost striking, where it's like, oh no, what's what we're playing in this new Reaper demo is essentially the core game experience. Like yeah. we don't don't get all of this stuff by default. Yeah, you have to go earn it. It's an RPG. You start off with like your basic things, and the characters get cool moves and shit. But to unlock the actual team up attacks that characters have the with each other, stuff. all the synergy stuff is Just, is built into yeah. a new synergy system called Folios. And now we're getting into it. Is called folios that is essentially an individual character's sphere grid. Yeah. That is completely different than their weapon sphere grid. It is different. Yeah, so now it's like, oh, you're gonna get the a, a somewhat similar amount of like weapon stuff that we had in FF7 Remake, which is exciting, but now it's like, oh, so we're expanding that. Now character relationships, discovery, like all of this mm -hmm. stuff you do in the world affects folios. And yeah. now folios is like individual other things like 10% health or defense boost, yeah, or now you can throw the, Tifa at somebody. This new sphere grid, like you were saying, it, it is could could be like, oh, more more attack, HP, whatever, but also synergy moves. So you're, it's not it's just... Also super cool it's stuff. not just one thing. Well, here's folios, and it's strictly synergy move unlocks. No. No, there's other things you unlock. And yeah. it, it's... It, it, I, I didn't really quite get it. I didn't really read too much into it. So that was one of the things, like, so what's cool about our experience with this demo, long story short, Four hours they gave us. Yeah. Four hours. We needed eight. Uh, we to be eight. to be to be really honest, we needed way more time with this demo because I feel like through what what I played, I didn't even get to finish it. Number one, yeah. I didn't even get to get past a boss because I was like running out of time, and I was like, uh oh. Yeah. Well, you, you like, the place was shutting down, and I the place was literally shutting even... down. And I was like, oh god, how long have I been here? Yeah. And that is the the the, the big gameplay part of the game that gets you used to its systems mm -hmm. and to show systems. But they also give you like a solid like hour and a half, two hours of the flashback, and it's yeah. the it's the the beginning of the game. So that shit is amazing, right? It was incredibly cool. But the amount of time almost that we had to figure out systems was like, oh god, I should probably start hurrying up, yeah, because I've been hanging out in this town too much, and right. just Looking at shit. So so there was something very cool about the fact that because you called this years ago, you said seven remake two rebirth as we now know it. It's going to start with the flashback mm -hmm. when in calm clouds telling them, you know, about the flashback. Because it's an amazing and starting point. And it's like 100 percent. That's where it starts. Yeah, that is the end. It's the tutorial. What's interesting about the tutorial is it is a gameplay bridge. Yeah, because chapter one, basically tutorial 
it plays like remake. Yeah. And I mean like I mean it's designed like remake. You know, you have your 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 little town and then you have your specific mountain path, you walk up, you know, and you fight a boss and it plays like remake. It's like easing you in from remake to Rebirth. Yeah, that's because, true. To the point where you get another party member and then yeah, you get some of the unique abilities the, they can do. The tutorial is very much like playing Remake. Yeah. And even even Calm itself, way bigger than the original game. Yeah. But even B- Calm Bigger than any town in the original game. Yeah. And, and, remake, and even Remake Part 1. And even Remake Part 1. But it's way, so it's like, it's bigger, but then you're, you're in Calm and you have like a sort of cinematic exit from Calm. Yeah. And that, like, it's building up to the new stuff. Yeah. Because once you get into the open world, that's when you that's when you get access to folios. That's when you get access to, like, chocobos. You get access to actual like exploration, so like, understanding the, the what, The game yeah. has this sort of bridge where it's like, here's, you know, we know how Remake was, which was like this cinematic adventure game, and it starts there. We're going to have still have this cinematic adventure before we just... It, it is not like drop you into like no. this open world and then what do you do? I don't you know. Go start picking posies. Yeah. You know? it, uh, it, it, it makes me realize that the, the later parts where we eventually play of the game are going to play pretty similar to Remake Part 1, which is like sort of cinematic dungeon-y places. You go to a, yeah. you go to like, if we eventually go to some place like Red 13's town, we go to Cosmo Canyon and got to go to Cave of the Gi, yes. that's going to play out yeah. kind of similar to like a, a, a dungeon area yeah. where you get the cinematic sort of dungeon experience. And we didn't get to see it, but were, I'm just kind of thinking in my head here. You know, when you go to the the crystal caves, whatever they're called, yeah, um, you know, Mithra Mines, I think it's technically now, right. yeah. whatever it's called in the original game, where you you meet the Turks yes. again, um, that's probably going to be more like remake, more like a dungeon, exactly. like a dungeon kind of guided uh, cinematic. Yeah, experience. The, 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 those individual places are more like the game's quote unquote like dungeons, yeah. Instead of the 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 vastness, it plays literally. Just use the comparison of the OG game. You get this open area that you run to a spot, a loading screen kicks in, I'm in Fort Condor. You, you yeah. leave at the Fort Condor, open area, there's some shit to do in the open yeah. area, but not much. In this one, it's like, okay, now in the OG game, there's not much to do in the open area. You essentially get into fights and can engage with chocobos, and yeah. that's like about it. You will look for places that you can go to. Yeah. Now the open area is fucking wild. Yeah. <laughs> like the stuff that's gonna happen in between the, the big cinematic dungeon areas mm-hmm. between like, oh, Open area, Mithril Mines, Mithril Mines, cool stuff is going to happen. Open area, then we're going to go to Junon, or you yeah. know, who knows how that's going to play out. But we see, with the game now, how much shit they're actually packing into right. the in-between areas of the cinematic so stuff. So this was my concern from the very beginning, from from Remake, before we even knew how anything was ever going to go. It was like, God, I really don't want them to skimp on the open world. Oh, Jesus, Right, man. so, and, and, and here's the thing. With giant open world, because I'm a big fan of what's called wide linear, where yeah. it's like wide open spaces, but we're still following there's the a story. Path. There's a story. There's a there's a story, a crit path. You just there's there's a way you're supposed to be going. But I was always worried about because I'm like they could absolutely do like a big world. Like I I was always a believer. I've been a believer for like you know ten years or more. That they, it could be done, but like I don't know if they'll do it. So. When you get these big areas, you get what's called, I call them the bowl design. Yeah. Where you're kind of like in this this bowl with a big flat middle, and you just have like these big edges that are just like these big- With in- points of interest in between. Or or it's just really flat, mm-hmm. and then there's just like points of interest, and then you sort of like dot the landscape, and there's kind of like not much in between them. Yeah. So what this game does, and I think for me personally, from my perspective, the triumph of Rebirth right now is the map design is good. Yeah. It's not It's a actually bowl. cool. It's not a bowl. It's not like a flat plane with, you know, like, you know, just sort of like darted points of interest. Yeah. Every sort of nook and cranny is designed to have kind of something to interesting. To lead you to something. But also it's it's supposed to have a, a, a flow to it, right? Because yeah. you'll notice from the, the, like from the one side of the northern side of Calm, where it's all deserty and rocks. And yes, whatever, yeah. And you see all these big macro reactor pipes, uh-huh. and they sort of feed into the other areas and taper off. And then, like you kind of see how uh, you know, the grassland area, which doesn't have a lot of you know Shinra tech, no, is flourishing yeah. versus the other the side Shinra that's been like, been, like sucked up. up. But that you'll just you the way you'll you'll come around a corner and you'll see a bunch of brick building ruins, and then like uh, Red Thirteen and others will talk about. Um, a whole plot point I was kind of unfamiliar with 
where they talked about the empire. The M they talked about the republic. The Repu sorry, the republic. They use this term, the republic, which is very yeah. present in their conversations. So they now. had like some civil war or something before with the republic, and it messed up the roads and right. the infrastructure and so got screwed up. Yeah. yeah, and it's all pre Shinra stuff. So yeah. you get like ruins of a of a sort of vaguely almost 1940s looking civilization. Bro, that's that's been abandoned was, because Shinra one took over and all this sort of older but not ancient older tech is yeah. just kind of left La laying around yeah the what was the reason you even went up there were you just meandering or so my, the reason i went up there was i was following the bandit side quest okay <laughs> and I... then i discovered oh there's all this stuff up there yeah so i was because well I, I i got really distracted but it was really cool because there's this one side quest where you go to this this this, uh, it looks like a fort, like a brick fortress, like a yeo, like a pirate okay. sort of thing with like a weird steering wheel on the top of the cliff, right? You go there because after you activate the Ubisoft Tower, and we'll get to that, um, I go there because there's a ping there for an ancient treasure. Yeah. And I get there and there's the bandits from Remake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The really we saw dumb in the trailer. Ones. The really dumb ones there. So that like moves eventually like they, up north? Right, so they stole the treasure there and you fight uh -huh. a bunch of them on the top of this like ye old pirate lookout point. Yeah. And then they run off because you beat them, but they go run off and hide in an abandoned factory in that desert area. Yeah. And all the way to the desert area is when I saw this other thing, and then I was doing the chocobo quest where you dig up stuff or whatever. And then it, it was really funny because I'm like sitting there thinking in my head, I remember these 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 goofballs, and they start playing the really weird remake music. You know, the old one. Like, you know, after you, you beat them in one of the quests, but it's a multi part quest. They move from point to point. Oh, so you're just like globe trotting. You're globe trotting because like they keep running away, and then you then the second part of the quest you have to learn the stealth mechanics, and they do stealth stuff. Oh, Jesus! And then, and then so I didn't do any of this. Right, so I'm just and, like... and then I beat them there, and then I can run off, and they're gonna go do something else. And I was like running out of time at that point. And I'm like, yeah. all right, because I was so easily distracted. So there. yeah, I I got led up to that area from uh, the I just got the chocobo. Yeah. And then they're they're like, my sister can use some help with something, and then you talk to. Uh, oh, that was the the choco bill. Billy's daughter. Choco Bill's, yeah, what is his name? Daughter, right? And uh, Chloe or something. Chlo something. And she says that she wanted to make something for her brother um, who's like, uh, this is a little, a little spoilery about like the young Chocobo Bill's kid, right? Yeah. But it's his grandson. And he's like in denial that his parents are dead. Ah. Uh. But the sister has completely accepted it. So he wanted to do, so she wanted to do something nice to him for uh, for that reason or something close to that and you have to go pick flowers to go so she can make something for him and it's like literal little flower crowns that they made when they were kids i see so it's got some like oof like some little like yeah, yeah like oh they like her parents their parents went back to midgar at one point and never returned or something so they got killed in some seedy underbelly wall market shit yeah um anyway Long story short, she sends you on this massive thing where it's like 1,200 meters away. I'm like, why the fuck is this? And it, yeah, it leads me down that place where you get all the cool backstory about the Republic. Yeah. And then uh, I noticed as I was going up there, uh, there's obviously the grasslands, but as soon as like you feel like you've seen enough of this zone, it changes to something. Yeah. I feel like you can obviously meander around this like kind of circle that is the grasslands, but as soon as you start to move a little bit more yeah. in a direction, you get to the swamp and the atmosphere changes completely. Yeah. You move it's in these- foggy. It gets and, foggy and yeah. weird. Like the atmo, literally the music changes. Yes. And the same thing happened in the, uh, in, in like essentially the, the Badlands. Yeah. Which is right outside Midgar where life is just drained from everything. Uh, so it was, it was a flower picking quest, long story short, but it wasn't just like, I'm gonna run up here yoink this and grab it. No, all these little sprout enemies that are like, oh, the Mako infused flowers turn into creepy fucking monsters. We gotta get rid of these fiends. Really? I was like, oh, it's the sprout guys from ah. like, that you fight. And then they, you just have to kill like 30 of them as they're all in the flower fields to pick flowers. I'm like, that's cool. And then you get a really neat like view of Midgar. It's mm. also another quest. It's like a photo quest. Ah. So there's FF15 photo quests quest. that photo you can quest, go and take yeah. pictures of shit with a, yeah. with a photography. Yeah, I, I did thing. a thing with the chocobo where you dig around the brick ruins. Yeah, and stuff. And then I did one where I I I, I didn't get a quest for that. I got a tank. I got one where I, I scavenged a tank. Yeah, like an old world tank. What? <laughs> yes, there's there's like a, a, across from where the, all the brick ruins are. There's like yeah. these tanks. Like this, just like decrepit and broken oh, down, cool. and it's in like the side Old of the Miyazaki cliff. tank. Yeah, yes, and, <laughs> and, and and like you you scavenge it for parts and stuff, and that's kind of like leads to some other like item synthesis thing or something. So it, it it felt like it was very naturally leading us in this direction through like side quests, and I, I kind of like my side quests. It gave me a huge like Aerith bonus. 
By the way, yeah. when you do side quests with certain characters, um, it gives like an affinity towards your relationship with that character. Right. That isn't just like, oh, so this just guarantees I'm gonna go on a date with them. It has an effect on that too in the future from what we understand, but it literally leads into the folio stuff. Mm -hmm. Where it's like character relationship stats and score. So it's like, that, hey. That benefits like literal, like, oh, now I can team up with Aerith if I do right. this so stuff. So you're going to get more synergy moves with this character. Literally cool limit if break you, stuff. If, if you, you do stuff that there's, they're a little more inclined towards. Yes. And then there was weird stuff. I think the weirdest one, and I think even you looked over at my screen and went point like, what the hell is going on? What was it? So we were, I was running, I was going way down by the ocean. Yeah. I was following the cliffs. And then I found like a... Uh, I found this wisp in the air and, and I'm like, what is this? And so like I, I, I followed it and it kept running away from me and it led me down this trail down the side of a cliff by the ocean. And then it went into this big cave. And there was all these weird glowing cubes and rocks oh, in yeah. this cave. And you were like, what the hell is that? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, you couldn't grab it yet. So I, learned... I hadn't activated Chadley thing yet. Yeah, so. I, I think that's so uh, before we get into Chadley, the thing that I loved is that as, as soon as we started going to the Badlands area, the music started changing. Right. So Badlands had a different theme. Yes. And it's it's the goddamn Sector 5 theme is where Aerith lives. Mm. Like, fly high once more. <laughs> it's the sad song from FF7 yeah. Remake, but done in an instrumental version. Mm -hmm. Like, do 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 And then it changes when you get into a fight into a battle version battle of the version song. Of I was like, damn, this place has, has like a mood to it. It feels so sad out here, you know? And, yeah. And it kind of is because you were just looking at this or just da 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 da. Yeah, because they play the main theme when you get into the grasslands. You get the main theme. It's this gorgeous theme. theme. But then, if you start and you you engage an enemy, it dynamically shifts to like a battle. But the battle version. Up version of the main theme of Final Fantasy VII. So I like it. Just it just so naturally moved us into that song from mm. remake part one and a unique world theme of that song that I was just like, this is depressing out yeah, here. That's cool. <laughs> I didn't. I after I did the bandits thing in the abandoned factory. I was like, I could go down this way more, but I'm running out of time, and I'll be damned if I want to spend my time in in, in dirt and rocks. And that's the so, and that was my so was and like, that was my problem. Right, go somewhere else. Yeah, Dude, time, time to explore somewhere else. Dude, and that was that was like my <laughs> issue is that you spend a lot of time in calm with character development stuff, like a lot. You can actually yeah. go around calm and talk to like all of the characters of your party because it's like you alone. Yeah, and you have to sort of like you, you leave on like a bad note. And you have to sort of like re recompense with everybody and, and you have to go talk to them, right? So you're building relationship stuff immediately within the game. And you're like literally going on like a date with Aerith type of thing, like, yeah. a, like a small version of that. But then at the same point, like Calm has a ridiculous amount of stuff that gets ready for how the game works of like, oh, the photo shit is here. The Queen's Queen's blood is here. You get to play that against certain people. I didn't touch it. I, I, I did. I didn't touch it at all because I'm like, oh, there's a whole new card game, which now, card games are started with eight, eight and nine, and, yeah. and I'm like, okay, I'm like, that's really cool. Not touching this, save it for the final release. I, I played it at <laughs> least, and it's, it's like, I was like, I'm here to, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I, I was so worried the yeah. whole time about time. I don't even know why. I, I, I because I, we had four hours, but again, it felt like we needed eight. Late, later on, I was worried about time, but in in the time that I spent just like literally going about calm yeah. and just talking to people in calm about stuff and like what they're saying about shit and talking to like Tifa and Barrett yeah. and Aerith and all this stuff and just exhausting like what's here and I didn't even do everything. I uh, felt I'm like, bad. Dude, I spent 45 minutes just running around this fucking town. I, I felt bad because I was like, man, this is cool. I need to get out of here though. Yeah. So like, <laughs> like I went, I talked to Barrett and I was like, okay, cool. Like, you know, the whole thing about I'll be the first one to buy you, you know, buy drinks, drinks and stuff, to, yeah. Your new place. I'm like, okay, cool, 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 cool. I, I gotta get out of here. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to run out of time. So for me, I rushed through the intro um, incredible title drop, I'll just say that. Um, I don't even remember where the heck. Oh, it's when you're walking to the cliff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Jesus the, 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 a, Christ. A Ghost of Tsushima level uh, oh. caliber, but more nostalgic title drop when they start like blasting it. Wait, and I don't want to. Okay, so I, and I don't want to talk about like a ton of specific moments of yeah, the, but I'm just like, the flashback. That was just basically but, setting you up. Like, hey, we spent. We, we, we were. The music is gonna be great in this game. Jesus kids. Christ, dude! Like, <laughs> the, like I'm just sitting here, like I can't, and I don't want to say too much because I want people to experience it. But holy sweet fuck! Like, <laughs> I looked at Simmons and I'm like, dude, this game loves its fucking music, bro. There's a part that like reminded me of like Lord of the Rings, like Ring Wraith shit. Yeah. I was like, God damn, this is so fucking scary. Like, yeah, this is so yeah. cool. Uh, I couldn't believe it. Just musically, I, I have. Uh, 
I'm shocked. I and even even it's like how, how are you even shocked after remake part one? In different ways now. Well, Hearing different there's, things. There's more variety and there's more stuff going on. There's just more different locales. Mm. So they have to change the musical almost more and more often. And that's the crazy incredible thing, because you're saying how they took a sad vocal song from remake and then they kind of turned turn it into, into an world instrumental theme. world theme for this part of the world. Yeah. And there's a different type of theme when you're running around like the swamp and in the ranch, you know, and stuff like that. So they, like it almost feels like they're in June and Harbor. If you remember from the first uh, 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 demo we played, yeah. completely different world map theme. Completely different theme. For, for every, every new area you go to in the world map has like if if the atmosphere is changing in some way, the music's changing with it. Yeah, it's so expensive. Like, I'm like, <laughs> this is so goddamn expensive, dude. And it's like they had it was it was like like uh, what's what's the Jurassic Park saying uh spared no expense spared no expense yeah on the music in this game like, it's fucking crazy what else do we want to talk about um the you did way more because i did exploration shit so that's I what i was doing but in, in, but I did exploration in a different stuff way in, in towns of like talking. Oh, towns yeah yeah I, was, I just found myself talking to so many characters and stuff and I, I was, was, like, I, was actually, fighting things. I was actually very interested in in just sort of the 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 world map itself. So that's what I wanted to ask you because you got to actually beat the demo. I guess you went to the world map and fought things and got experience. Right? Not even. I cheesed the boss. Oh, you did? Oh, I cheesed it hard. Okay. So I died once and then I went, there's no way. This thing's like three hits and I'm dead on this thing. Yeah. So I put Barrett and Aerith in my party because they're zoners. Yeah. And I played as Aerith and I jumped. I went behind a tree, jumped out, me, 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 jumped back, oh, me, 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 jumped back, and then I realized the weakness. It has a hard weakness, yeah. which not only does it do a lot of damage, but it hard, it it really chunks its stagger meter up. Oh. So I did this cheesy. I barely won that fight. Yeah. Either way, so I would just do Eris, work up AP to pray because it's a non non item use because I ran out of items pretty fast. Um, way to heal your party without using an item or using MP, and then if I would stagger it, I'd switch over to Barrett, use limit break. Y yada yada. So I was cheesing the boss. I, I got into that fight and I got this bitch down to like that much. And so, and, and just as like a, a spoiler, it's the Midgar Sormer, the Midgar Zolom. Uh, they actually have the the the, the, the correct translation yeah. name this time. Uh, the fight's actually super cool, and it gives you a a hint. And how future fights are going to be with interactable stuff because we saw this also in Junyon Harbor, mm -hmm. where like there's interactive elements in in the battlefield now instead of just running around and fighting. Now it's like there's trees and stuff that light on fire that you have yeah. to go hide behind during certain attacks and shit. Yeah. So it's like, oh, that's cool. I don't remember that being there a ton in in remake. Not it as, seems not, to be a little bit not more. As much, yeah. Like, obviously, the apps fight kind of had some goofy water stuff every here and there. Yeah, but it, it just felt... I beat the fight. I'm glad you didn't see it because there's a very significant cutscene oh god that happens there that yeah. that it's better that you didn't see it okay it's better that you didn't good. see it honestly just just That's because good. it's weird how like they wanted people to see that and, and don't read other people's previews. Although the guy said not very many people actually beat the Zola. So yeah, and that's that's what I'm leading to is that in in my experience, I be, I didn't do much fighting. Like I didn't yeah. I didn't go do well, that's the other extra weird thing. That, if there's any weirdness about this demo, it didn't feel like there were a ton of enemies on the world map. Not a ton. There wasn't a lot. I mean, you could find enemies and fight them. It was, and if you wanted to get the unique enemies, you had to follow the the Chadley points. Yeah. To go put. But them there them wasn't. Down. It wasn't like. You're constantly fighting. It wasn't like just enemies everywhere kind of roaming around constantly. It yeah. wasn't really like that. Yeah. Like, it actually kind of, like, let the environment kind of... Speak for itself. Speak. Yeah, like... And I didn't I didn't mind it, actually. It didn't bother me. It, but it, it, it didn't fit it, because it didn't feel like you're bored running around not doing anything. Right. There always seemed to be something like Elden... Not Elden Ring perfectly, but Elden Ring-like, where it's like, you're going to you're gonna run for only so long until something happens. Happens, right, yeah. And it's like, oh, okay, so that, that feels good. So my my issue is that I barely did any fighting. I went to go fight like the alpha dunk things, right? And yeah. I just got slammed. I was like, this is kind of hard. Yeah. Like this is actually not super easy. And then I I realized why it is that way because because the boss fight's kind of tough. Like it's like this is this it is the first tough. boss. Like of the I said, fight. I barely beat it. This barely. Is the, this is the first boss of the game, and I'm like, this is actually pretty hard. Um, and I like that. I like that it's challenging because guess what? It's encouraging you to do. It's encouraging you to go grind. It's I guess. encouraging you to go fight things I guess. and level I, I, up I, I, and go back to the area my, and do things you haven't done. My feeling was that it wanted you to, like, learn its counters. 
Well, it definitely has. Because I was them. like the other thing for my thing was like, there's no way. I'm like, I'm like, I, I was looking at that. I'd have to grind forever because I wasn't leveling super fast. Sure. As much as I was trying to fight, and so I was like, there's got to be something I'm missing here. And 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 for me, it was ice. Like, it was, well, whatever. The snake's weak to ice. So I was just casting ice on it a lot, mm -hmm. and I noticed that it. it you know, it, it hurt it, but again, it really hurts the stagger. Gauge, the yeah. stagger was like insane on casting a good ice spell on it. So I was like, so in, okay, in, so it's, and I'm like, use the trees, avoid, avoid so isn't the that, trees. So isn't, isn't that a, a, a kind of sick though, where it's like, okay, so you can brute force it and go back and fight a bunch of shit and level up and grind. You could. Because what was one of the biggest again. complaints about Remake Part 1? There was no grinding. You couldn't grind anymore. You didn't, yeah. There was one spot at the end of the game under an expressway that was actually worth it to grind. Yeah. Everywhere else, you can just pass the enemies. Yeah. There's no most, there was very little incentive to sit around and just fight things, which is a mm -hmm. huge part of old, old FF7. Like, oh, this is a good area to get X potions or whatever. Yeah. There was almost no incentive in, the, in, in Remake Part 1 to grind, and it was kind of a complaint. So mm. I think this is a good call where... All right, so if you just obviously don't don't have the time to invest in figuring out how the mechanics of the fight work, just go grind, just go fight shit, mm -hmm. go do all, go do, go fulfill all your folio stuff, and then level yeah. up people, and go go to Chadley and all the crazy spots and go up, level up this yeah. shit. Yeah, and, and they were telling us they're like, hey, when you get to the open world, we recommend going to Chadley because he and, gives you a ton of stuff. Because he unlocks, go to. yeah, he unlocks the game design stuff, and this is the thing where I think. The only party pooper some people will have on this is that they're straight up Ubisoft towers in this game. Oh yeah, yeah. However, before before you refund your pre-order, when you activate a Chadley Tower, it points about five or six pings on the map. Yeah. And they're all different from each other. Yeah. It's like one of each type of specific Explorable. ping. One of it's like here's a, here's a an ancient treasure. Here's a Moogle house, which you did, I didn't do. Yeah. You know, here's here's a a, a named monster location. Like we we know it's like you know. Uh, actually, I don't know if they're named monsters. Alpha Dunk. Well, you know, in, in Xenoblade you have named named monsters that oh, they, yeah. they kind of roam around, and it's like okay, we, that's we, that's a that's a bad that's a big baddie. He's yeah, tougher than normal. We saw this in the um uh the preview in September in Japan. There was like some crazy dragon that pops in the Badlands area mm. that you probably have to eventually get to. So what's cool about that is that you start unlocking more things as you discover stuff, right? Yeah. The same thing with like the Moogle House. You go to the Moogle House and they have a ton of like unique gear and materia and sword art slash like hand art weapon books mm. that like increase, I guess, stats. I, I saw, I saw, I saw footage of the Moogle House that I didn't do. Yeah. And I was like, wow, it gave me this weird Kingdom Hearts vibe. For some oh, it kind of is. With like, yeah, and Cloud know. enters it like he's literally like high on shrimps <laughs> or some shit. He's like, all right. <laughs> and he just does what they say. It's, it's implied that you're in some weird, crazy, like, uh, goddamn acid dream state <laughs> when you go into the Moogle House. But when you leave, you learn that the Moogle House, uh, when you complete the tasks, it unlocks more of the Emporium for the Moogles. Mm -hmm. And when you go around the world, you'll find Koopo Moogle tokens. And the tokens are the currency, the Moogle Houses are the Emporiums, meaning that every Moogle House you complete, more of the store unlocks. This is, a, okay, it's, they're no, they're, they're no pawn coins. Yeah. In front of the so, yeah, and, and, and how do you get the Moogle Coins? The Chocobos find them, you find them on top of towers every right, once in a while, yeah. they're just scattered all yeah, over the place, okay. but they actually have good shit. And they have, like, good, unique gear. That good, you unique gear for... and unique material. Okay. And I was like, okay, Chadley's the same way, where if you just explore the map more, you get points for it, and it yeah. unlocks a bunch of unique materia specific to him. So what also is related to your crazy-ass cave, um, that I was, went in there. We found out that was related to summons. It's related to summons. There's, this is this. I think, I think this is fucking genius. Yeah, I was actually very impressed with this. Um, this I, I looked at Chadley, and he's like, check out the combat simulator if you get a chance, and you're like, you peace out. And I was like, Man. let me see what's in here. And there's a ton of shit, and I was just like, too much shit. <laughs> what the fuck is that? You can fight Titan. And I was like, oh, okay. That, haven't done that before. Uh, let's let me let me fight Titan, and it's like you do not possess the points to uh, to modify this fight. And it's like, would you do you want to fight him at full power? I'm like, uh, sure. And I live for like an, a minute and a half, and then he fucking just kills me. I was like, off like that much health. I was like, shit, this is tough. And then you learn through Chadley that the more you explore in the world and you go and find things like that, like they're yeah. called spires, materia so, spires so or some here's shit. The thing. You can lower his power. They're shrines in the world map. The shrines are dedicated to the deities. The deity of, of, that, of zone. that zone. So there were like these, like this sort of like, um, like ancient Japanese gods or spirits or whatever. Yeah. So there was, there, there's like certain, the summons are deities of areas of the world map. Yep. And if you activate the shrines, which activating them is basically 
the center of a shrine, which is usually in some cave somewhere. Or in it's literally like Materia Cave looking right. shit. You'll, you'll, there'll be these little like, like, uh, like rock pile or like stone pile shrines. Yeah. And you basically like, you knock them down to release these little wisps, and all mm-hmm. the wisps return to the shrine. They're very close to it. It's not like, oh, I gotta go like on a huge Easter egg. Yeah. Run. If you find a shrine, there's about three shrine things you gotta like knock down very close to it. And we're pretty what, sure this in turn goes back yeah. to Chadley and lets you actually drop the difficulty yes. of the Titan. So what you do is if you if you basically like activate all the shrines for a certain deity, it massively lowers it lets his, you actually fight him. His stats so you can actually beat the the And I don't I don't the Titan know. and get it as a summon material. And that's that's the ultimate reward is that oh once you beat him, you get him. Yeah, so it's like this thing where it's like you have to go and honor the deity. Yeah. Of that part of the world map to get that summon, which is brilliant. Oh man, that <laughs> probably in part three. But can you imagine what that's going to entail for Knights of the Round? Like holy, well, I mean, this is this is essentially <laughs> right what I was what I was like what we're hoping have to do to do that. Th- now? This was the reason where I was like, bruh, this Final Fantasy VII remake sequels mean that Knights of the Round is going to be part of the story. Like, it won't just be this thing you just go and can do. No, they're going to make that bitch, like, we're going to go get all these assholes to whoop ass. Yeah. We need to find this ancient power of the ancients, right? Yeah. To actually fight this stuff. We stand no chance. Let's go get the power of the Knights of the Round. Yeah. I'm like, oh, and it's just setting up for that. It's setting up for, like, the future events yeah. from some mysterious unknown land you're going to go to. What's the what's the deity of this area? We don't yeah, know. Yeah, and, and again, you don't, like, need summon summon, but, like, you know, they were, you want they're completely summon, awesome. They're fun. Yeah. But, like... Summons are not just you find like the red materia summon now. Now it's kind of like, I like how there's like, oh, they're, they're, they're the guardian spirit of this corner of the world. Now you have to go and like honor them or find their shrines or whatever. Yep. So then you have then you have to prove yourself and fight them or whatever. And what is that good for? You're you're incentivized to do this stuff in the area. Yeah. You're incentivized to go kill the elephadunks or the rare monster here, mm-hmm. or to pick enough like random things that give you blessings of the of the world or Gaia or something yeah. like that. All these things contribute towards these stats that eventually allow you to fight Titan. And then yeah. win, and then get Titan as a summon. If not, fight the higher difficulties and maybe get more rewards. I don't know. Yeah, but that it was just like that feels very natural. Like, yeah. It feels like a very like oh this is a this is a good call. Like the more yeah. side quests I do, the more the more goodness I do for the planet in this area, the more of a chance you have to appease the god of that area. Which exactly, is which yeah. is now the game summons. I'm like that's fucking smart. Like I like that. Like that's yeah. a good call. And speaking of like natural, I, I I will have to give a really good. I think we should at least point out like. The localization I felt was still Holy super good. Holy shit, bro! Like, it's very, very good. Oh, like, we're, yeah. we're kind of in the new age of, of localization. Of localization being like excellent, and yeah, this game is is no exception uh, because it really feels very like the dialogue is very natural. I, 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 there are a couple moments where I just like laughed out loud, literally out loud, at how in, funny in this shit is. Crowd of people because. <laughs> The Joker will fill line. Well, there's that and oh my god, yeah, well the, the swamp, yeah. But like um the shack, right? Like the swamp shack or whatever yeah. time. But no, I laughed uh, probably the hardest when you re-meet Chadley for the first time. Yep. And he's like he scans Cloud. He's like, I have my my new like, you know, uh do, you know brainwave scanner can tell me what you're thinking. Right now, Cloud, you're thinking, the hell is this weirdo doing here? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yep. <laughs> I'm like, it's well, the, Chadley, like, yeah. And, and the, the, the other one that's super funny is like, you run into Chocobo Bill and his like messed up truck. Yeah. And you talk to him and it's like, you know, you've obviously ran into this character before because he gave you a ride to come. Yeah. The end of like Integrade. Uh, so you run into him again and you start chatting with him and Cloud's like, you got any place to hunker down? And he's like, hunker down, huh? And, and then he says something along the lines of, uh, well, there's this there's this shack down there by the marsh, and, you know, I won't ask any questions what, you know, you kids in love are going to do down there. And he, like, leans into Cloud, and Cloud's like, Ugh. like, like Ugh, I don't want to talk about this. Because- yeah, he's, because, because Joker Bill's kind of like this. Elderly hippie. You want to go down? You want to go down to the river and fuck? You go down here. <laughs> I used to be young. <laughs> and then Cloud's like, I was so uncomfortable with it. It's so funny, dude. I'm like, this is this is great. Like all all the characters so far are fucking fan. I actually really liked um, Chocobo Billy, his sister. She's mm. so good. Like and like this is this, these the, all these characters feel so natural and just well done. Even uh, I have flashbacks up with Zangan. Also had some really oh, funny yeah. shit about him yeah, too, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. So I I loved it. I, I want to talk so much about the flashback shit because it's just like 
And I, they I, were kind of like, eh, could, you, could, you, could you not? Like, I don't know if you... I, I don't know if they told us that or something. All I can say about the flashback is that um, this scene has been done so many times. Mm -hmm. Through animes and other game recreations and yeah, flashbacks. Yeah. We've seen this scene a billion times. It is by far leaps and bounds the best it has ever been portrayed mm. in this game. In terms of like elevation and story and why things are happening and motivations of characters and where it's going. Instead of them being huge like sort of jumps of just like, oh, okay. That's yeah. happening? Okay. They're, they're, I like how, because in the original game, you, you, it's like two little scenes of them just kind of like, did, 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 yeah. like walking up. So it's obviously like Remake, it really expands the whole hike, you know, up. It makes it seem like this is fucking dangerous. Yeah. Like, where and, we're going is like, people don't go here. And it's like, you really get to see Sephiroth the Soldier. Yeah. More of Sephiroth the Soldier before it becomes kind of the Sephiroth you know. In, in you know in the main game yeah and that's actually kind of fun so you get just more more time with with that version of that character it's done so well like i i almost have like there, there's so little issues i have with any part of it there's like a couple of minor like things here and there but it's like it takes a while it takes like an hour and a half to two hours to get through this whole flashback and we even skip a big part of it. Yeah, they even had a thing where it's like, hey, do you want to skip the part you've played? Yeah, because the, the Materia demo? Keeper demo fight is is, is skippable in what yeah. we played because it was the old demo. Yeah, and there was only just that. Not, it's not going to be that way in the final game. No, no, it no. was just for our build where they're like, we made this skip where you don't have to replay the thing you did at the last demo. Yeah. And I'm like, cool. And I, I just skipped it because I'm like, cool, it's I cool. I did too. I'm I did like, too. it's cool, it's cool, I know it's cool. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I just... I just loved it. I absolutely. There are so many things that they added in atmosphere that I just, I fucking loved it, man. Yeah, I, I, I honestly think that I, I said it at the end of the thing. I'm like, it's probably gonna be my game of the year. I, I don't feel like anything I, right now. Dude. From what I've seen, nothing, nothing really seems. To oh, have a chance. let's talk about the technical shit. So uh, a negative, no foliage interaction. That is true. That, that they, they did not, that eventually did not come online. We're, we're probably going to have to eventually wait for a hopeful PC version at, at when the PlayStation exclusivity eventually goes away, hopefully, right? Yeah. But yes, there was some foliage in the old trailers, and that is just not online anymore. So that's like a negative, okay? Yeah. So there's, there's, some, there's my negatives. However, um, the only other negative I can possibly say, and it happened when you move the camera around super fast, Unreal Engine pop-in. Yeah. You would just get some obvious, usual UE4 texture pop in every once in a while. It would fix itself in like a blink of an eye, but then it would be like, it would be gone. And you're like, oh, okay. So it's just yeah, typical UE4 bullshit. There was like the, the aforementioned like uh, tower where they fought the bandits. There was like a point where like you could literally like see half the tower. Yeah. And like the texture the, loads the in, in front of you. The, the top part was like loaded in, and the bottom part was, but there was like a big gap. Is it? And it's like you literally, there's a threshold, you cross it, and we're like, Pop in, pop out, pop yeah. in, pop out, pop in, pop is, out. And is it is is like the LOD stuff that bad? No, it's pretty. I mean, much, it was very far away. It's pretty much typical <laughs> of most like games. It, it feels a little bit more sensitive than most because this is Square's like, you know, first big on uh, open world game since FF15. So I mean, it, is it that bad? No, I noticed it. I just did notice it a couple of times, and if we noticed it in the previous build because it was a little rough. If you're looking for it, if you're really you'll looking see. for it, you'll see. They do try to make the map not be like one big flat road straight yeah, yeah yeah so like you do like wind in and out so they, they're able to sort of i feel i feel that it's kind of down on purpose to sort of try to hide some of like the the really far 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 yeah. away load and stuff yeah so there is a little bit of like there was like a little bit of fidelity stuff there so the the, the good news is that uh well it also is bad news our tvs like weren't great yeah, we had some kind of washed out like, and, monitors. And I, I made a lot of footage recording, which you'll probably see during this, of like the 4K parts of the game, which is 4K30. Didn't seem to really have issues with any stuttering at 4K30. Yeah. And the other parts of the game, which are 60 FPS, who knows, are probably upscaled 1440p. Um, but in comparison to the previous builds, I definitely said, oh man, performance mode in that older demo from September was rough. Oh yeah. It ran at a good frame rate, but geez, this shit's running at maybe 720p, bro. Yeah. Like it is very smeary yeah. when you were looking at it. So I was like, and, and, and for that, that old build, they were like, we don't want you to be playing performance mode as much, even though a ton of footage eventually made it out of that. Um, so I was hoping that maybe that means it's gonna get polished up. Mm -hmm. Good news, it did. Performance looks a lot better looks than a lot it better. did the last build. 
uh, as far as just fidelity, re like yeah. you know, just clarity, resolution. Because yeah, it was. It's still it, a little it, blurry, but it's like it lo this looks like it's getting close to like an upscale 1080p to 1440p, yeah. something around that. That every picture. so often, yeah, you would see like very minor things. But here's the thing, again. For me, I don't, I mean, I noticed it, don't get me wrong. I definitely noticed like, you know, the little unrealisms yeah. uh, here and there. It wasn't a detractor. It wasn't a detractor. But you know, I'm used to playing Xenoblade, which runs on a potato. <laughs> so, you know. It's gorgeous. The thing, here, the thing here that was striking is that the art is good for the game. Oh yeah. Like the art style, the art design of the world really works and that's what you really need in a, in a big open world or, or that opening bro like you need to have a really good art style like like this game does yeah. so that's that's where i'm like i'm very happy to say i like the way the world is kind of portrayed and looks yeah and then just sort of the the, the ambiance and feel of it it's fucking um, gorgeous like if you look real close and you get you know, yeah. sorry nitpicking at small things yeah, it kind of falls apart, and there's clear room for upgrade in an eventual PC version. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. But when you like are just running around and engaging with stuff and doing things, I'm like, shit, this, this feels. And the music is kicking in. I'm right. like, I could smell this fucking yeah. place, bro. Like, like this is nice. To be a hundred percent fair, here's what I'll say. I think it doesn't look on on a fidelity tech raw technical aspect. I don't think it looks as good as, say, Horizon 2 did on no, PS5. No, I don't think so either. Um, I do think it looks better, at least maybe artistically in a, in a way, better than, say, Spider-Man 2. I was really un kind of like whatever about Spider-Man 2. That just could, could be my my weird biased disdain towards city, cities, yeah, urban city stuff. Where I'm just like I'm bored looking at it. So like yeah, it's a different kind of open world that we have not seen a ton of before. The closest right. comparison is probably Horizon. I it guess is probably Horizon. I don't think it has the fidelity of Horizon, it but I think it's not, it's not it Decimate has, Engine. I think it has more intrigue. Because, uh, yeah, maybe because I think. They're trying to, um, it feels like they're trying to make every corner feel like it has something unique yeah. in it, where Horizon is supposed to be post-apocalyptic, so there is supposed to be, you know, just wide open swaths of land with like a couple points of interest where it's mostly just overgrown, yeah. you know, whatever. And here, it's, it's a little bit more down to earth, because the thing is, is like, we don't know if you'll pilot the high one in this game? Probably, yeah. not. Probably not. You run, you ride on chocobos, and you do go fast on those chocobos. But like Horizon 2 was built with the idea that you're gonna fly over this stuff eventually. Oh, I see. In a giant, on a giant pterodactyl. So yeah. you're gonna be way up high. You're gonna, you, you're the gonna, scalability you're gonna, of it. You're gonna be seen, cause this game, you're just, you're just closer in the whole game. It feels like you're, you're, you know, you're standing next to Cloud yeah. or whatever. So it, it feels a little more um, tighter, like, you know, more like, intimate zoomed in a bit i so guess from, so kind of like it kind of feels somewhere between god of war ragnarok and horizon 2 as far as like yeah. the sort of feel of just moving around and not as like insanely wide and expansive as obviously like a xenoblade chronicles something like that mm. not that not that insane well, xenoblade kind of bounce it kind of bounces back and forth where they'll have areas that are really big and then yeah. they'll have areas that are mostly kind of like more guided kind of closed in stuff or whatever For sure. but you know that it, it's it's I don't know. I feel like in a weird sort of way now that because there was that sort of really awkward growing pains phase of the PS3 360 generation for, sure. for for a lot of Japanese developers. Now I think they've like you know with Square Enix with Microsoft, uh, they really kind of figured out what they need to do for big stuff, big open stuff. And, and Elden Ring is part of this where like you know these Japanese developers are like okay we figured it out like I know how to make an open world we got it. And now we're really seeing like the really weird, crazy, fantastical stuff uh, of a Final Fantasy, of an Elden yeah. Ring, of a Xenoblade, where you're, yes, the, it's not just about is the world big and open, but now it's like, I want to put weird stuff in it. Yeah. I want to put like uncommon things. I want to, you know, a Zolt, you know, or a Midgar Sormer, you know, a big giant weird snake like that, you yeah. know? Um, so there's, there's more of a fantastical element, which is really intriguing about it. Because a lot of open worlds, again, Horizon's amazing, and so is Witcher 3, which are both big inspirations for this game. Yeah. But Witcher 3 is very much trying to do a sort of slightly fantastical version of, of uh, medieval Poland. Yeah. Right? And Witcher 3, or I'm sorry, and Horizon is very much supposed to be, Calif Witcher Horizon 2 is California post-apocalyptic. It's mm -hmm. like, it's, here's landmarks, but it's, it's, 
it's this feels it's like Nevada, something it's Nevada and the Redwoods and this California. This feels fantastical. Right. This this comparison. feels like well, we're not trying to make it look like anything that exists on planet Earth. Yeah, we're, we're trying to make it look like OG FF7. Right, <laughs> which know? is intriguing because there is a, a and, and there's a lot of really fun logic to the way things are built. Like, because we talk about this, Calm in the original game feels like a, a, a town that was made when it was going to be a different game. A different game. Yeah. Like, like, like a ye old Final Fantasy, like a nine yeah. almost. Um, in this game, Calm is a little bit different, but it still feels very European. It's Disneyland as fuck is what it is. But it also has these weird Shinra Mako pipes yeah, yeah. and technology in it. So they've kind of figured out this way to sort of fuse oh, like geez. Shinra Corp tech into stuff. You know, what I, you know what I realized that it reminds me so much of? It reminds me of a town in a Miyazaki movie. A little bit, right? It reminds me so much of something like straight out of Howl's Moving Castle. Yeah. Or like like Kiki to a certain degree. Like the way those towns feel. Yeah. Like it feels very, very European. Just like a very village. European European village feeling that like and, and like the, the hustle and bustle of it of like mm -hmm. it was I just walked around and looked at shit for like forty minutes. I couldn't believe it. I was like I feel like I'm at Disneyland right now, yeah. man. Like the in tandem with the music and everything. Especially yeah. Jesus dude. So it, it's it's it, it's just to me, it's really incredible to see just a game that's taking sort of the art style, the the theming, the the feel of Seven Original. They're updating it, obviously. They're making it very big, but they're adding all the stuff. Like, here's these these roads from the Republic or whatever. That's like this bygone era that's really not touched upon mm. in the original game. But now they have the ability to do so. Now they have the ability to sort of like it wasn't just okay, here's this plot of land from the end of the caves to June and Harbor, right? Now we can we can actually There's put a story here. We can put a story here. We can put stuff here. We can have, like, this used to be a road that buses used to go along before Shinra took over and nobody used them anymore. Yeah. And they just kind of fell into ruin. So, like, you have just more going on. There's all this, like, world building and storytelling stuff. Like, just this place, this area of the world is really high up on cliffs. So what, we have these unique windmills kind of just going up there, mm -hmm. which is kind of like that one first... Not town. It's like it's like a little ranch or orchard you find. Yeah, it's the, where it's you're the first point of interest. You're you're introduced to folios there. Yeah. Um So it's like you have like stuff like this is over here, and then like the Chocobo Ranch guy. He's near an area that has a lot of like feeding areas, like little like flower beds for for Chocobos. Where you have to go and like you have to do yeah. you know, a little sneaky thing to get your to train your Chocobo stuff like that. So like there's just the way they're kind of like thinking about the ecosystem of the world and. Did you see any of the Mako Springs? I never ran into one. I saw them on the really. Map. Yeah, I saw them on the really. The, the, the I, mini map I ran itself. into one like accidentally one time. I'm like, whoa! The music changes and then you get near it. What the fuck? Yeah, because like you know in the original game, the, you know when you're walking up to the Mako reactor, you find that whole cutscene where they talk about this is where like you know Mako energy collects and crystallizes and forms a materia. Yeah. They have those all over the map now. Oh god. Not all over, but just like. Every area at least has like one Mako spring somewhere. Huh. And you can find these Mako springs and you can find materia there. Oh, Jesus. Man. You know, where, where it's like you find this this weird like crystallized Mako flower or, yeah. or, or um, um, you know, life stream flower thing. Where like the life stream is collecting and, you know, forms the materia. So like it was just finding like weird thing like that. I'm like, whoa, what in the the heck is this? What's yeah, going on here? Discovering weird stuff was like, it, it, it's like the game was working its butt off to show you weird stuff. Yeah. And this is like area one. This is like the the first, we didn't even, mm -hmm. we technically only got to the first boss. Yeah. Like that's it. So this was just essentially tutorial land. We don't know where this is gonna go. We don't we don't know how many of these actual zones are gonna be. We have a decent idea from all the trailers that there's a lot of them in these big open areas, right? But at the same point, it's like, I, I'm, I'm so happy that they were almost restrictive in showing us other stuff. It wasn't like, now we're gonna take you to a part in chapter five. Where you're yeah. playing as Zack or some shit. Like, yeah. it wasn't that. And even the we first, still don't know anything about Zack. Even Zach. the first demo was only a small skip away from where this demo ended. Yeah, pretty much. It was just like getting to the Mithril Caves, and then it ended Seemingly, out, seemingly then outside first, the Mithril Caves. Yeah, and then our, and then our first, because that's, that's where the snake is. Yeah. And then our first demo we played was on the flip side of that, yeah. going to Junin. So it's kind of like, yeah, there's just this one little sequence in the middle that we haven't seen. And the crazy part is that this, like, first area you're in, if you just want to like exhaust all of the events, activities, enemies, monsters, summons, springs, searchable, collectibles, Mako, uh, Chadley bullshit, Moogle bullshit, if you want to do all of it, that's going to take you like five to ten hours. 
Oh yeah. Like there's there's gonna oh, be so sure. much shit for you to do. Oh, for sure. And it looks like there's completion bonuses if you like. There there's is. like little dots if you max out the area and stuff. So it's like oh goddamn. And then, God and damn, then with, bro. The, like, with the first demo, the name monsters have conditions. Yes. Where it's like you can and you can refight them. And it's like try so to, to, like, to get the conditions. Try correct. to like do these three things during the fight to get like bonus whatever XP. Something. Or bonus stuff. There's like the yeah. There's a, there's a whole there's an information bar. Where like you want to, they learn about the area and it fills up all these points for the information yeah. about the area and that leads to some reward too. So yeah, I think I think so to wrap this up, um, impressions pretty good. Yeah, uh, <laughs> impressions very positive. Um, I haven't seen Final Fantasy VII lore stuff, uh, much less like story mode, story elements handled this well like yeah, ever yeah, yeah. when it comes to the flashback it was mind-blowing how how cool it was and then when it came to the actual eventual world reveal exploration character development the realization of how much stuff there is the realization of how much time left i have and i'm not yeah. gonna be able to do all this i'm like christ dude i need literally four more hours like i can't believe you yeah um i i was mind blown i just kept seeing so many so much stuff that like i wish this experience was saved but dude, we're literally at like the first less than 10% of the game. We're yeah. like, we're watching like the the very opening of this stuff. Mm -hmm. This is this is like just the equivalent of us seeing only the bombing run in Remake, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And having and, no clue. And I think really at the end of the day, this is the seven remake in my head that I envisioned nine years ago. Sure. This is for, for people like me who were like, because I'm, I, I've always been like, I'm so sick of Midgar, Midgar this, Midgar that, so much Midgar. This is this is the game that needed to hit the home run, for sure. But it was, it was in the end, I think it was the weird to say, I think it was the right call to do what they did in the end. Yeah. Which was, we make remake part one Midgar to learn all our mechanics, figure out our combat system, figure out how the game's going to function and play. Because we're not going to try to learn all that on the fly while trying to make the whole world of Seven. Exactly. But now that's figured out. And now that we're here in the whole world of Seven, and technology is even farther along than it, obviously much farther along than it was, it was a good call in the end because this is... It allowed is, them to realize this the way it is. Yeah, I think it did. Because now we're, we're actually, this is actually the Seven. This is the Seven you saw in your head. As a kid. In 97. 1,000%. And now it's even better. Like, I honestly yeah. feel that way. Like, this, this has... This has eclipsed like my imagination of what it was, and then they also start adding new shit. And yeah, then they, and that's the thing that's like really fascinating about it is that oh, that wasn't there before. This is specifically this is different, very intentionally, and it's like oh, and now the mystery is there of just like oh, so where are oh, we yeah, going? Oh yeah, you you don't even know how much mystery there is because <laughs> some of the stuff you didn't see is kind of like what's that leading? To? <laughs> what what is that? What mean? does that mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so so yeah, I'm sure a lot of other impressions and stuff are, are up right now. I'll get my own personal one up the, the same day as this goes down. Uh, it is my personal hope this will be going up uh, it's been going up February 6th, 30 minutes after the event. Uh, yeah. it's the, the event's at like 3.30. Uh, I think our embargo's at four. So it's my hope that my hope that Square announces during that event that the demo is what we played. The demo is actually from that event. That's so much demo. It's so much demo. Like it's like it's you get so the full flashback and you get like chapter one to like the the Midgar Zalem Swarmer. Uh, if that's like the beefiest demo ever, bro, it's that's huge. so much demo. It's so demo, but it also is like the most banger fucking demo. There is no way your ass ain't buying that shit after <laughs> playing it, dude. There's and I, I think the same thing kind of applied to FF16. Like that demo did so, was amazing, man. It, it did. It set up for a game that was very different after that, all things considered. Yeah. But if, if obviously the rest of FF7 is similar to what this core game plan is, because the remake is obviously very. I'm sorry. The the uh, the retelling of the flashback is a very specific sort of thing, and then you get the game, and here's what the game is. It's yeah. like, dude, if we. I mean, it is 150. It, it, I don't it, know, people saw that and are kind of like is, freaking out. I'm like, well, it's having such, played the game, yeah, it, this being 150 why. gigs kind of doesn't really surprise me. It doesn't me. surprise me. <laughs> so it's my personal hope that today is the 6th as this goes live that we actually get access to all the stuff that we're talking about and you get to witness it and experience it yourself. <laughs> I, I, Dude, I'll be so friggin' happy if other people get to try this, so. Well, I mean, that's just gonna, my February gone. <laughs> if, if, if we get that side, that whole demo available for us, it's like, you know, like my February would There's be gone. There's so much to do. <laughs> so it, it, in other words, it's, yeah, I, again, probably gonna be, probably gonna be my game. 
Probably. Like, it, it's it's got that feeling. I have that feeling, like, kind of like that RE4 feeling, where I'm like, it's, yeah, it's, okay, it's so January yeah, that, or it's February, ah, game of the year's here already. That shit, like, yeah, the, the, the impression you get from, like, an early playable, because even with something like 16, for example, we had some, like, questions, where, like, yeah. this seems like sort of wrathy in, in a lot yeah. of ways, and it kind of was in the end. There wasn't any of that that like little bits of concern there yeah. was none of that now the things that I was concerned about mostly have been fixed yeah where I was like oh so now we get to see all the systems and how they're working and fuck they're vast mm. like they're setting up for a lot of game here dude like a yeah. lot of fucking game so um, yeah I, I love should it. just please uh, please square hopefully this what we played is actually available for everybody soon after this if not uh, Simmons will be playing it I'll be playing it, obviously, and uh, yeah, we'll probably get our playthroughs we'll, live on yeah. YouTube. And we'll, we'll, we'll play it, we're, we're, I mean, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll play it when it's available for everyone. Uh, yeah, and uh, again, uh, just for perspective's sake, I won't be playing it outside of uh, available time frames. So even if I get an access code early, or something similar to FF7 Remake, I'm pretty much going dark after all this. Yeah. I don't want to know shit, man. Like, look at the achievements list, all that kind of shit, I'm just going dark. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm just waiting for the experience, the rest of the experience to be completely thrown into my face and just to have a very natural reaction. Because the nice part I'm glad is that I recorded on my phone our faces of some of the shit that happens and you should see my fucking face right after you press the start button. <laughs> like, <laughs> holy oh, shit, oh, dude. With I don't the, want to talk about that. Oh, I want that, to yeah. be a complete surprise. I was like, holy fuck. <laughs> Damn, we're getting into this shit, boys. Yes. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>